<laughs> My next question for you is, as a therapist, if you have a gay client come to you, um, are you going to try and persuade them to make the same life choice that you did? That would be therapeutically totally unethical. So no, I would not ever do that. Um, do you I, have gay clients that are currently living the gay lifestyle? Yes, I have gay clients that are currently living the gay lifestyle. And I would be remiss to try and influence them to change their life course and their choices. That is not why they come to see me for therapy. Uh, so when you talk about in your Life Star biography, you mention unwanted sexual attractions. What are you talking about when you say that? So in my Life Star biography, where a 10 U.S. connection between Life Star and reparative therapy comes from, I suppose, with some people, is the fact that in my Life Star biography, um, I say that in addition to helping people with sexual addiction, which is what Life Star is about, I also help, uh, and I'm going to not say this verbatim, but something like, I also help uh, people who are struggling with unwanted sexual, uh, unwanted homosexual feelings or something like that. Um, unwanted sexual attractions? <laughs> unwanted sexual attractions probably is what it says. Uh, and so what I'm referring to there is um, a lot of times within religious groups or even not within religious groups, gay people go through a period of time where they feel as though they're, excuse me, had to burp, where they feel like their uh, attractions are not wanted. Well, I, I think it's like, from my understanding, most people when you are growing up and you're young, you are just automatically going to assume that you are heterosexual. Sure. So there's a level of that. So there's a level to which someone realizes that they're gay and they're, I think that many people probably go through a time where it's like, oh, wait, I'm, I'm not heterosexual. That means the loss of a lot of things and it means a lot of new things. And so many people, I think, go through at least a small period of, of wondering about their attractions and maybe feeling like they don't want them. But within religious contexts, it gets a little bit more uh, intense. And there are the, I, I, and the reason why I feel like this is something that I'm really good at helping clients with is I went through a major period of unwanted homosexual feelings uh, where I really did not want them and I wanted to change them. And finding peace with my homosexuality was important for me uh, and that is something that I'm sorry my voice is going because I have been sick but that is something that I have that's one of the aims that I have with my clients is um, helping them to accept their sexual orientation and their feelings for what they are and to feel good about themselves despite them because they are okay and they they, they're maybe not they even are okay despite people. them but just that that is just too right are. that might be poor phrasing yeah like it is a part of them and they are okay um and so anyway that's so the only I, reason why i put that particular phrase <laughs> in my biography is because <laughs> that is the population that i am trying to reach out to is somebody that has those particular feelings um, because I feel as though I have special ability in helping them to f feel acceptance. Because obviously if someone's gay and they're totally fine that they're gay and they never had any problems with that, they're not going to be seeking therapy right. anyway. Right, they are. So the, the population you're looking to help is those that are, there's disparity. They're struggling with a lot. Of the specific one I'm looking for, the specific population I'm looking for, is people struggling to reconcile their homosexual feelings with their religious upbringing. I think for obvious reasons, I feel as though I have some um, expertise in that particular area. So, And you feel like you have found peace with that yourself, right. that you would not describe yourself as being... Like... Conflicted. Mm -hmm. Right. Not to say that I feel as though any client I have would have to find their personal peace in the way that I have found peace, because that is not what I'm saying at all. 
Well, and um, it's like if you had a client come to you that was of a different faith or a different religion or had no right. religion, you would not be trying to convince right. them to become Mormon right? as a therapist. That would be, that's unethical. Like, I would be completely, that would be totally inappropriate and it is not what I am about as a therapist. I am not a therapist to try and convince people to live in certain ways. Like... That's not why I went into therapy. That's not what therapy is. Um, so therapy is not trying to usher people down certain paths. Uh, I have plenty of clients that are, don't share my faith. And I am not trying to... I do not view their therapy through the lens of my own faith. This is uh, gay clients or not, you know, or clients of any orientation. I... It is really inappropriate to view... My job is to meet a client where they are and help them by uh, viewing the world, meeting them within the context of their worldview, and then helping them to reach their therapeutic goals. One of the first things I do in an intake is ask a client what their personal therapeutic goals are so that I'm in a, I'm in a therapist's job is to help a client meet their own goals. You mean the cl the, the client's, client's goals. own goals? Sorry, yeah, not, your goals. not a therapist's goals. A therapist superimposing his own political, religious beliefs onto a client is damaging and harmful for a so client. So, what would you consider be to be successful? A successful case of a gay client. Well. Um, I think in, or just any client is yeah. successful when they feel as though they have achieved whatever objective they had for themselves. So um, with a gay client specifically, if they're a client that is um, looking for reconciliation, if they feel as though they have found a situation where their faith and their sexual orientation feels reconciled, that is... Successful. I, success will look different. Success will look. Success will look different for uh, any number of clients. A lot of clients end up going to see a therapist numerous times over the course of numerous years, and so it's a lot. It's not something where it's like, oh, you got your gold star and you're everything's good. It's a process. A lot of times, it's a process. But um, but yeah, I guess I can't emphasize enough how much. I value a client's own personal opinions and views as the basis of therapy and not my own. Um, mm -hmm. And also, have I talked about this? We've done this video like three times now, so Sorry. I don't know if I've mentioned this, but I have clients who have chosen very different paths. I have clients who are living a gay lifestyle, and I have clients who have chosen paths that are more religiously oriented. It is not my job to tell a client what path to choose. I don't do that. So that is my personal therapeutic stance and philosophy. For whatever it's worth, that is what I do in and the office. I think that anybody that has gone to see a therapist would know that, you would think. Right. Well, but I think people are hearing cases of oh. specifically reparative therapy yeah. where this is not, this is why I am not a reparative therapist. Like, this is why I don't believe in reparative well, so therapy specifically. Hope. Because it's, well, and not only that, but it's also, it is prescribing a very specific kind of path and, and one that I think is flawed, fundamentally flawed. So. Okay. So, Yeah. Hopefully that answers questions. Yeah, like seriously, I I appreciate people's desires to know, but I am tired of talking about this particular issue. I hope that's okay to say. Tired as in I've been trying to write about this and talk about it clearly for a while. So I'm really hoping that this little conversation helps clear up. Um, people might still have questions about different things, but... This is the reality of my therapeutic stance for whatever it's worth. I could not be more honest or real. Like, I am not hiding anything. Like, this is where I'm at. 
Uh, and so this is this is my therapeutic stance, and I hope it makes sense. Yeah, and I I also think we want, just wanted to let people know really quick that the past month we've been really overwhelmed. Like we've loved the. It's a good overwhelm. Yeah, I mean, but, we're so grateful for it. We don't regret anything. But. We're like really chill people. We're just very laid back. And so we're not, uh, it's. Coming up with an action plan is, is not. Is, we're, we want to do it because we feel right. like this is very important. Um, and I just But it's think, not who we are. We're very like yeah. just kind of laid back and more. Our pr approach to life is way more passive and. Uh, and kind of like go flowy. We go with the flow. Yeah. So, so that's what we've been doing. <laughs> but we do have approach. things on the docket, like that's, that's things true. that we w we feel are important to talk about. Things that we <laughs> think that we need to address, uh, and we just want. And we plan to do that, and we will do it. At, at, you know, in our time. And one, you know, like the. <laughs> the bullying issue like sure so we plan on talking about bullying up. we talk there's there's numerous <coughs> there are numerous things that we plan on talking about oh and then reminders oh nightline, nightline is next thursday a no, week, this thursday this thursday this upcoming thursday what day is that the 19th 19th and then um my blog is getting a revamp at the beginning of the week okay this is already too long so anything yeah, else we have to say peace out i think peace friends we love you all thank you for even the Your haters. Support. Even the haters. Love we you. love you. I mean, we'll just. <laughs> no, I think we it's are good. cheesy and loving. So well, that's we, who we are. And people. we appreciate like people. We appreciate trying different to give stories a well and the well-rounded perspectives that come about from multiple stories. All right. Bye. Bye.